going to be a great year. But what we wanted to do was just um, talk about the fact that obviously 2017 was a very active year here at the UN. And we expect a lot of activity this year as well. We're starting off fast, and I want to touch on a few topics that are now front and center facing the world. In these first days of 2018, nowhere is the urgency of peace, security, and freedom being more tested than in Iran. By the thousands, Iranian citizens are taking to the streets to protest the oppression of their own government. It takes great bravery for the Iranian people to use the power of their voice against their government, especially when their government has a long history of murdering its own people who dare to speak the truth. So we applaud the tremendous courage of the Iranian people. The government of Iran is actively attempting to stop social media and other forms of communication that allow their citizens' voices to be heard. So we want to help amplify the voices of the Iranian people. Here are some of the messages that they're chanting today. All these brigades have come out to the streets. They've come out against the leader. Political prisoners must be freed. Independence, freedom, Iranian Republic. Neither Gaza nor Lebanon my life only for Iran. Let go of Syria, think of us. We will die, but we'll take Iran back. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid, we're all together. And in reference to the Supreme Leader, quote, feel some shame, let go of the country. Those are not my words. Those are not the words of the United States. Those are the words of the brave people of Iran. Now the Iranian dictatorship is trying to do what it always does, which is to say that the protests were designed by Iran's enemies. We all know that's complete nonsense. The demonstrations are completely spontaneous. They are virtually in every city in Iran. This is the precise picture of a long oppressed people rising up against their dictators. The international community has a role to play on this. The freedoms that are enshrined in the United Nations Charter are under, are under attack in Iran. Dozens have already been killed. Hundreds have been arrested. If the Iranian dictatorship's history is any guide, we can expect more outrageous abuses in the days to come. The UN must speak out. In the days ahead, we will be calling for an emergency session, both here in New York and at the Human Rights Council in Geneva. We must not be silent. The people of Iran are crying out for freedom. All freedom-loving people must stand with their cause. The international community made the mistake of failing to do that in 2009. We must not make that mistake again. On a second matter, the crisis in North Korea will continue to have our attention in 2018. We finished December with our third strong sanctions resolution of last year. That was a great achievement, but there is more to do to ensure full implementation of the Security Council resolutions. As we hear reports that North Korea might be preparing for another missile test. I hope that does not happen. But if it does, we must bring even more measures to bear on the North Korean regime. The civilized world must remain united and vigilant against the rogue state's development of a nuclear arsenal. We will never accept a nuclear North Korea. There's one more item I want to mention. You have all heard that President Trump's comments um, made about Pakistan. The administration is withholding $255 million in assistance to Pakistan. There are clear reasons for this. Pakistan has played a double game for years. They work with us at times, and they also harbor the terrorists that attack our troops in Afghanistan. That game is not acceptable to this administration. We expect far more cooperation from Pakistan in the fight against terrorism. The President is willing to go to great lengths to stop all funding from Pakistan as they continue to harbor and support terrorism. And that brings me to my final point. 
The Pakistan aid issue is not connected to the vote we had with Jerusalem. It is entirely connected to Pakistan's harboring of terrorists. However, as I said in December, we won't forget the Jerusalem vote. To that end, tomorrow night we are having a reception for the countries who chose not to oppose the U.S. position. This is a great sign of U.S. friendship, and I look forward to tomorrow evening. We hope to see more of this in 2018. The United States is asked to do a huge amount around the world, and we're happy to do that but we expect to be treated respectfully in return. I wish all of you a good 2018, and I'll take a couple of questions. Thank you, Ambassador. What do you, which UN body in New York do you want to handle Iran, and to do what? Well, I think right now we're going to have conversations with the Security Council and see what we need to do to have an emergency session. One way or the other, we will have a meeting on what is happening in Iran with the protests and their fight for freedom. Yes. Thank you, Ambassador. Margaret Bashir with Voice of America. Um, Ambassador, in light of the protests, is there any unilateral action the United States plans to take against Iran? And uh, also, uh, here at the Security Council, do you plan to hold Iran accountable on another front, uh, perhaps through the, the uh, Yemen Sanctions Committee, for the uh, missiles that they fired into Saudi Arabia? You had that presentation last month. Right. There's no unilateral plans at this time um, that have come from the administration. What I can tell you is we are absolutely going to move forward on the missiles. You will see us look at um, Resolution 2231 carefully and see what needs to be changed so that we can put a stop to the Iran Iranian testing of ballistic missiles. Yes. Uh, Joseph Klein, Canada Free Press. Uh, will the U.S. maintain its present level of funding of the U.N. Relief Works Agency for Palestinian Refugees in light of the General Assembly of Jerusalem Resolution pushed by the Palestinians and the Palestinian U.N. representatives threat to unleash, quote, all the weapons we have in the U.N.? Close I think the President um, has basically said that he doesn't want to give any additional funding um, or st stop funding until the Palestinians are agreeing to come back to the negotiation table. And what we saw with the resolution um, was not helpful to the situation. We're trying to move for a peace process, but if that doesn't happen, the President's not going to continue to fund that situation. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Uh, ma Madam. Uh, Madam uh, Ambassador, my name is Abdul Hamid Sayam from the Arabic Daily Al Quds Al Arabi. Now you're so strong when it comes to the freedom and dignity of the Iranian people, but you have different meaning of freedom and dignity when it comes to the Palestinian people, who been who been brutalized for over 50 years of occupation. The second question related to it: What make, made you believe that you are on the right side of history when you stood alone in the Security Council against 14 members of the Security and in the GA 128 countries? You only found countries like Palau and Nauru next to you. What made you believe that you are on the right side of history? Thank well, you very much. I stood proudly, even if I was the only hand in the Security Council to fight for the will of the people of the United States. They wanted to see the, the embassy moved to Jerusalem, and we followed through with that. We very much still want to have a peace process. Nothing changes with that. The Palestinians now have to show their will that they want to come to the table. As of now, they're not coming to the table, but they ask for aid. We're not giving the aid. We're going to make sure that they come to the table, and we want to move forward with the peace process. One last question. Yes. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, Fuji TV. Can I ask you regarding uh, North Korea? Uh, has you heard uh, reports about uh, South Korea proposing talks with North Korea? Can you give us your reaction to that? And if about this uh, talks, does it affect any of your policies putting pressure on North Korea? We won't take any of the talks seriously if they don't do something to ban all nuclear weapons in North Korea. We consider this to be a very reckless regime. We don't think we need a Band-Aid, and we don't think we need to smile and take a picture. We think that we need to have them stop nuclear weapons, and they need to stop it now. So North Korea can talk with anyone they want, but the U.S. is not going to recognize it or acknowledge it until they agree to ban the nuclear weapons that they have. Thank you very much.